It's the brand new AMG GT. Look at that. The front end looks exactly like the GT Black Series, but in a new, slightly bigger Grand Tour of form. I tell you, when AMG are left to their own devices on design, they knock it out the park. Look at this thing. It just looks everything that a GT is, but, but brought into the modern world. Bit bigger, bit wider, huge changes on the inside. It's got double the practicality. It's a bit heavier, a bit, you know, there are ups and downs, but what I want to show you right now, this very second, is the design. Because when I saw it as a GT customer, and remember I've had seven or eight GTs, and that's not a flex, all I'm saying is I know the type of person who loves the GT. It is AMG design personified. Front end, so AMG Black Series. We've got our air curtains, the huge mouth almost touching the floor with the giant radiator behind there, new Affalterbach badge, very recognizable front lights, just like previous generation, but now with this three dot, a bit sleeker, but very recognizable. Massive power domes, so wide. This is like, for a standard GT, this is GTR width. You do start to see some SL, and we're gonna talk all about the SL and the GT and how they're related and how they're not related. But this element with the flush door handles, kind of the muscular structure. But I can tell you now that the GT's body is different. It's wider, um, it's unique to the GT. It's not like an SL with the roof. And that, that side profile is brilliant. Look, you've got Black Series here again. This is that typical Black Series line. The most amazing new AMG alloys. How cool are these? Lovely, these are like, not even Y spoke, they're like Trident spokes, which are gorgeous. Absolutely lovely, motorsport type wheels. And now I know you're desperate to see the rear. Let's check the rear out. Again, when I saw that rear, to me it just screamed AMG GT immediately. What do you guys think? This is of course aerodynamic package car. So we've got the fixed wing and a few other aero things that I'll fill you in on later in the video. But that light, typical AMG GT. It's actually really nice because these three dot elements like we had on the front, they're 3D and they pop out. And you've got AMG written here, which is lovely. And it does connect in the middle like your, all your new AMG, well not AMG, all your new Mercedes coupes all having that. But it doesn't look that bad in GT, does it? In, in fact, it kind of suits it. I know a lot of people are gonna start saying 911. You're not actually wrong, light bar, right? But that's not actually a light, it just connects the two. And to be fair, this is strong enough and it reminds me of old GT enough that it's okay. The rest of that is pure AMG GT. I'm not gonna sit here and listen to any Porsche 911 comparisons because that is like SLS, it's like AMG GT and this follows the same strong rear shoulders, small greenhouse, big exhausts, slim lights. Of course, of course there's a V8 powering these. So don't worry about that. Not a four cylinder shit pot in sight, just a pure V8 on both of the versions that I'm gonna to talk to you about today. And to me, as a GT customer, it's just flipping beautiful. So guys, this car in front of me is the most powerful new GT and the sporty AMG that you can get. It's the AMG GT 63. So the first thing is they've changed the naming conventions. We used to have GTS, GTR, GTC Black Series, etc. Now we're going to the standard Mercedes-Benz naming of GT63 and a lower model that I'll tell you about in a second. But the formula for AMG GT has changed in a big way in our new generation. First of all, the GT for the first time ever comes with 4Matic Plus all-wheel drive as standard. So you can't get a rear-wheel drive one now, they're all 4Matic. Secondly, it comes with a rear bench with an interior shared with the SL, and secondly, a much larger boot with the hatchback than it's ever had before. Now, you will remember that our previous AMG GT was actually a rear transaxle layout. This is where you have your transmission, your diff, your rear axle, etc., sitting on the rear. Then you have a torque tube that leads to your engine. That, of course, gave that car a wonderful weight balance of 4753, but our car today is different. Because we want to fit in the 4Matic, we want the rear bench, and we want more practicality. So what AMG have done is they've put the engine and the gearbox together on the front, and then, of course, we have the 4Matic workings as well, and then we have the 4Matic on the rear with rear wheel steering as well. So it's a totally different setup, 
very, very similar or basically identical to what we find in the new SL. And the reason for that is because it shares essentially a modified version of the same shell that we use in the SL. So we've seen this body shell before and it's an aluminium composite body shell. Composite means we're using different materials. We've got aluminium, we've got steel, magnesium and fibers. So it's a very rigid structure, more so now with the GT than the SL, of course, because this is a coupe. But what you really wanna know about is what's under the hood. Let me show you what's under the hood. We have, of course, got an amazing AMG V8 under here that shares its lineage with my Black Series GT, the GTs of the past. It is the four liter twin turbo V8. And this time we get two versions in our GT. The first is this car. This is the most powerful one you can get at the moment. And this produces 585 brake horsepower, 800 Newton meters and a quoted zero to 60 of 3.2 seconds, essentially putting it on par with our AMG GTR beast of the green hell of the past. The second one that you get is the GT55, which has a bit less power, 476. We have 700 Newton meters, and I don't have the pad information for what the um, 0 to 60 is yet, but we can hazard a guess of say 3.5 on that car. But the cool thing between the two of these is that apart from the engine power, they are identical in terms of dynamics, engine mount, suspension, kinematics, all of the good stuff that we care about, limited slip differentials, they are identical. So just because you're choosing a lower power car doesn't mean you're gonna end up with one that's less dynamic, which is the case with the SL, where the SL55 has much less in terms of dynamics as standard than the SL63. We're not playing those games with GT. GT is gonna be as dynamic as possible. Now, starting with that engine, we have active engine mounts, which come standard now. And what those do is they manage the biggest weight of the car, which is of course the engine. And it depends how you're driving. So it can make it more comfortable or more rigid, which is great. This was an option in the previous GT and it was standard on GTR. Now it's standard on our GT. Another thing that's standard across 55 and 63 is the electronic limited slip differential on our rear, which is great again, being standard. And now we have again, a multi-clutch nine speed gearbox with a wet starter clutch which is great, we're not using a torque converter, which nobody wants because they're slow. We've got the fastest shifting gearbox we can have. Then we move on to aerodynamics. Another thing that comes from AMG GTR is the active air panels on the front, which open and close depending on how you're driving to help with aerodynamics and cooling. And then we have a hidden spoiler underneath the front of our car. This was again, first done by AMG on the GTR, and this goes down at certain speeds in order to create a Venturi effect at the bottom and reduced front lift. Now, this is an option on the SL in an aerodynamic package, whereas on the GT, it's completely standard, just as it was back with the AMG GTR. Of course, we have a multi-level rear spoiler, which we haven't got on this car, because instead we've got the optional aerodynamic package, which gives a fixed rear wing and provides even more downforce than the standard car and really makes this car in the end look so much like an AMG GTR, which who's gonna complain about? And then finally, finally we have a lift system in the AMG GT. It's something that GT customers will totally understand because you always scrape the front and now we've got a 30 mil lift on the front, which is fantastic. The weight we think with carbon ceramics, again, I haven't got the PAD information, is around about 1900 kilos. I know what you're gonna say, okay? Let's take a step back for a second. We've added, as you'll see in a minute, in terms of the interior, in terms of the boot space, a lot more practicality. We've got the formatic system that makes this an all year round car. It's leaning more towards Grand Tora in its base form. That's not to say that in the future, they won't go and do something mental with this car. They have the ability to do that. No one in the back, when I speak to them, is saying we're not gonna, they're actually raring for it because they see this car as their halo car, the one that they love the most. The passion that they exude when they talk about this is unlike all their other cars, right? So that can happen. Yes, 1900 kg, probably quite heavy, but it's how you deal with that weight. And we can only decide that when we drive it. Now the weight distribution of the previous car, as I said, was 47 to the front, 53 to the rear, which is that perfect kind of, you know, rear wheel driven car weight distribution. This is different. Most of our hardware sitting on the front. I haven't got the exact figures, but we're talking something like 53, 54 on the front and you know, the rest on the rear. 
it's not ideal, but again, we need to drive it to understand how that's gonna feel. So that's a question for the future. Now, this is aerodynamic package version of the car. This is what non-aerodynamic package looks like. Still very nice, okay? Um, I personally prefer Aeropack because it really reminds me of GTR and with that Mina black series front end, it just works. Speaking of black series, I wanna show you what this looks like versus the black. And you can see that front end, so similar. But then you notice how much longer this car is. It's 18 centimeters longer. It's six centimeters taller. I don't mind it because it kind of looks like it's gone to the gym and it's gone to bulking season. Maybe it's not cut down, but it's a big old brute. I'm biased because I really love the fact it's got a rear bench, but we'll get into that. Compared to previous GTR, you know, very similar look, as aggressive, I would say, um, but it's bigger. Then you compare it to SL, because I know you guys are going to compare it so much to SL, and you can see it is a different beast. Other than those doors, which are basically the same, I think, it is different. It is wider than the SL. It is more aggressive than the SL. The body parts are all different. You know, this is a different vehicle and it's a different beast. And hopefully, hopefully it drives that way as well. Okay, so that's all the technical bits. So you understand what this car is, what it's doing, where it's standing. You know, there might be a plug-in in the future with a battery and 800 horsepower and all that kind of stuff. Not interested in that today. We want to talk about this one. And again, let's have a look at the design. Let's get up close and personal. Let's go inside. Let's see that interior. I want to show you the boot, all the cool things. Let's do that right now. Okay guys, now we need to look at this, kind of walking around it, get a feel for the dimensions, kind of that, that shark nose that's so typical of AMG GT. Can you kind of get the vibes of GT Black Series and GTR, apart from the VFX that I've shown you? The kind of, you know, that shark nose, the light, that front air curtain, the wheels are so nice, aren't they? They are absolutely gorgeous with this kind of this element in here, the ceramics, the Trident style spokes. Ah, oh, Michelin, Pilot Sport S5. Oh, that's a nice surprise. So Pilot Sport S5, of course, replaces 4S as the ultimate all-round tires, only made for OEMs at the moment. Uh, excited to try these out. So that's great. Um, yeah, the long bonnet. This is, this is what GT and SLS have all been about. Long bonnet. And you step further back then, we've got the shortened greenhouse, passenger cell, and a short boot, but very strong, very muscular. That's what GT's always been about. It's been about muscle. It is the true muscle. Look at those lights. Oh, the rear lights are gorgeous. You know when we say we're going to miss our C63s, etc. Granted, this is going to be a much more expensive car, but at least you've got a V8 Super Coupe. That's got a little rear bench as well that I'll show you in a minute. I love the lights. So nice. I love the 3D effect. Very, very GT, the whole thing. Fixed rear, rear wing with the aerodynamic package is cool. I'm not sure about the naming convention. I love GT, S and... I don't know, having SR, Black Series, you know, the letters, etc. were just more exciting in my opinion. Anyway, it is what it is. My goodness, look at that. What? Oh, I haven't seen this angle yet. That looks amazing. And I don't think that looks 911 at all. That looks very, very GT. Got the lovely quad pipes as well. And the aerodynamic package gets that extra little bit at the bottom. Quite aggressive, quite aggressive. And then we've got the side flicks. You know, mimicking what we used to have on GTR. Shoulder width is lovely. Look at that. Look at the width on that rear arch. And indeed, then on the front arch, you know, the whole thing just looks absolutely fantastic. Then you've got added tech, like our welcome light, like you see in the SL, etc. And there's further things like digital light on the front with the welcome logo. You know, stuff like this we never had on GT before. Then we've got a long greenhouse at the moment. We've got, either we can have an aluminium roof or we can have this pan roof. So you have the choice, no carbon roof option yet. Maybe in a future car, future option list, we will see. I like that rear three quarter. It looks great from back here. Look at that. What a stunning, stunning looking car. Now, GT owners will know, it's all about the hatchback. And this is a hugely deep hatchback versus what we had before. 
It is so big, it is so big that I can get in there as well. Heck, I'm gonna prove that to you. Right, I am gonna, there we go. Are you actually gonna close it? You little shit. It almost didn't open. <laughs> Not my finest moment. Um, yeah, it's deep. It'd be deep in here. So yeah, it's, it's deep in there. And of course, we got a split fold. Of course, you get much more space when you do the split folding, and it kind of gives you an idea of the space if you don't take the rear bench option as well. Now, let's check out the interior. Same interior as the SL. So because I've got limited time, I'm not gonna spend too long on that today. You can see it's the same interior, the same lovely jet air vent design, the same cloak on our driver zone. We've got carbon fiber on the center console. I wanted to show you what that looks like versus previous GT. Now, a lot of you will cry foul that it is the same as the SL, but the SL's interior was basically an AMG GT interior with a screen put in the middle because it still has the exact same vent positions and the same NACA duct style center console because that's the NACA duct V8 shaped one like we had in the GT. It links much more to GT than it ever did with SL. Overall, this interior, when it was introduced in the SL, was pretty much the best that they've done in any Mercedes or AMG in terms of merging analog and digital. So I'm not gonna complain that that is now in the GT. We've also got the brilliant AMG bucket seats in here. The pan roof makes the whole thing look so much more airy than the SL, which is cool. Of course, your carbon steering wheel comes with the usual AMG drive select unit buttons on the right for your drive modes and the left for your settings in driving. And of course, in the MBUX system, you've got all the unique AMG specific screens, as well as AMG track pace to measure your racing stats, etc. So yeah, really nice interior. And then the thing that GT customers just won't be used to, the rear bench. And this I'm so happy about. As a family man, the thing that I've missed in GT is being able to use it with my family, with my kids, creating those memories together that means so much. The seats are built for someone about 1.5 meters, so it's fine for kids, fine for teenagers. You know, adults can just about squeeze in. It's perfect, honestly. And if you don't want it, you fold it down with the split fold, but you have the option now. You can enjoy this with more than just yourself and one passenger. This means a huge amount to me. They could make a track version in the future where you get rid of this and you've got a roll cage, but at least the base version of the car has turned into a proper, proper Grand Tourer it's what the GT is, it's a Grand Tourer. So guys, that is your new AMG GT in GT63 form, aero package, V8 powered, double the practicality, maybe triple the practicality, thanks to our rear bench and the deeper boot that I got stuck in. It's just a stunning looking car. My summary for this is it, it just looks like a GT Black Series, but as a daily, with extra seats, more load capacity, Formatic, all year round use. Same horsepower as the previous GTR, more dynamic than the SL. It's got to be the perfect AMG daily. I can't wait. I can't wait to own one. I'm going to buy one. I have to. This is so, so nice. This is the first bit of content you're going to get on RBR, and you're going to get an absolute load more because I love it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of RBR. I can't wait to see this car again. So if you have enjoyed, please do like and subscribe. I hugely appreciate the support. And I'll see you guys later. Enjoy that view.